Business of National News and in our top story, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, made an inspection tour of the new Emirates Airlines terminal at the Dubai International Airport on Saturday. He was accompanied by Dubai's Crown Prince, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Dubai's Deputy Ruler, Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Chairman of Dubai Civil Aviation and Chief Executive of Emirates Group, Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum. Tomb. Sheikh Mohammed began his tour in Concourse 2, where he inspected the counters of the General Department of Residency and Foreign Affairs. The ruler then headed for the new terminal through the internal metro, which connects the old terminal with the new one. Enter entering the new terminal, Sheikh Mohammed inspected the arrival and departure lounges, as well as two arrival sections, where he was briefed on the latest e-gate system to speed up and simplify the immigration process. Sheikh Mohammed hailed the General Department of Residency and Foreign Affairs initiatives and advised them to exert all possible efforts to achieve 100% passenger satisfaction. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed al Nahyan, the ruler's representative in the Western region and chairman of the UAE Red Crescent Authority, is calling on the community to help raise funds for the nationwide charity campaign to help Yemen's food shortage. Sheikh Hamdan said in a statement that they will spare no effort to meet humanitarian needs in an extension of the approach learnt from the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan. He appealed to both Emiratis and expatriate residents to assume their religious, moral and humanitarian duties towards those in Yemen by donating to the fundraising drive in order to ease suffering. The donation campaign is continuing today for the third consecutive day and has so far collected 4.3 million dirhams. The RCA is receiving cash donations through 167 sites from shopping malls and cooperatives to banks and government and private bodies across the country. Islamic scholars are putting fasting hours this Ramadan at nearly 15 hours each day. Scholars say the fasting times will range between 14 hours and 50 minutes in the first weeks of the holy month to 14 hours and 20 minutes towards the end. The weather this year has also been forecast to peak at 46 degrees for the first couple of weeks to around 41 towards the end. Ramadan this year has been predicted to start on July the 20th and those fasting have been advised to avoid fatty foods and heavy meals when breaking their fasts, as well as fizzy drinks and spicy foods. A total of 5 million null cards have been produced since the Dubai Metro started its operations in 2009, with 1.5 million transactions made on a daily basis. According to a local daily, His Excellency Mata Altair, the chairman of the board and executive director of the Road and Transport Authority stated that null cards are sold and topped up through more than 1,000 outlets and that the number of daily transactions of null cards currently tops 1.5 million transactions. This includes passengers' entry and exits from metro and bus stations, payment of parking fees and recharging of cards. He stated that the figure is indicative of the rising number of users of mass transit modes. As of today, those who have not signed up for an Emirates ID card will be fined 20 dirhams per day in delay charges. The deadline ended yesterday after a month's extension was imposed at the end of May. Delay charges are set at 20 dirhams per day and those who fail to pay and accumulate a total of 1,000 dirhams in delay charges will have to pay the 1,000 dirham fine before they are able to travel out of the country. Over 38 Abu Dhabi-based workers have revealed that 12 months of English classes have finally paid off, according to a local daily. Labourers at the Sadiat Construction Village were happy to learn English and they can now communicate with ease. The programme was organised by the Tourism Development and Investment Company and five TDIC staff volunteers who carried out the classes. After working hours four days a week, students were divided into five groups and were taught the basics along with topics related to their line of work as well as conversational English. At a recent gathering, the art community examined the relationship between contemporary interpretations of national identity, ethnicity and art. Barjil Art Foundation, which is dedicated to promoting art in and beyond the UAE, organised the event in an effort to further promote better understanding of the industry as well as artists. 
The art community engaged the public to look more closely at the relationship between an artist's ethnicity and how it impacts art. According to them, through this effort, they hope the public will have a better understanding of art as well as the artists. They say artists often find themselves seen and judged by their nationality before their art, which is supposed to extend past the limitations of race, colour and creed. The discussion relates to the Foundation's current exhibition, aptly called Alienation. Works on display provide a narrative that destabilises ideas of national identity, highlighting scenarios of alienation in various contexts, including geopolitical relations and daily life. The UAE and the region are going through uh, huge changes and uh, people are trying to, uh, to, as to uh, ascertain a specific national identity. Uh, and we're trying to explore whether it is possible to uh, identify a single nationality or, or a, a single identity uh, that, 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 uh, that exists within the UAE or is this a global, uh, globalized identity that, that, uh, that we see uh, in the UAE and the Gulf. The concept is the, the, mis the most important element in my work. So uh, it's, it's the message that I'm sending through my work. So, and to be honest, there's no one message, it's different. So sometimes I'll be talking about the uh, changes in our environment that I'm, I am as an artist or as a human, I'm not happy with. And sometimes I'll talk about uh, the issues that we're suffering from as, as a human being or as a woman. And finally this evening, art and design toy enthusiasts will get a chance to preview and possibly own some of the most exciting contemporary designs from artists across the UAE. The Middle East's largest designer toy exhibit opened on the 28th of June at the Dubai Mall and will run until the 8th of July. It features interesting, unique and colourful interpretations by established Emirati artists, as well as locally based new and established emerging talent. According to event organisers, the 125 designs on display explore a range of interesting concepts, from unique and colourful pieces to cultural and iconic styles. When the exhibition finishes, the doll collection will then be put up for auction at the Sheikha Wafas Gallery, the FN studio located on Al Circle on July the 12th. It will be open from the 10th until the 11th for public viewing. At that time, the toy industry was, was booming for children, but didn't really have anything for adults or designers here. So when we introduced Mega, it was sort of a revolutionary product to the Middle East. And so far, now it's 2012, I think Mega's you know, gotten off on a really good start. A lot of people are taking a, a lot of liking to the platform as well. The outcome is a celebration of urban arts in the Middle East. Using the mega design, a blank three-dimensional canvas, artists expressed themselves and customised it according to their preference. Jalal Lookman created an interesting approach incorporating wires into the canvas, while Emily Gordon's Mirage employed bold colours and Janine Ilbini used the kaleidoscope effect on her doll to get her message across. What sets this apart from others is just the diversity. We all start with a core little white plastic uh, doll and um, the, how people have interpreted it, the amazing you know, artistic uh, um, uh, rendering on all these is just really, really wonderful. Uh, people need to come down and see it. It's not only a, an art uh, exhibition, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very much a glue where it, it brings all the different uh, members of the community together, uh, different levels of artists together, uh, a lot of them come from different countries, uh, yet they all uh, come together um, in, in, in this one art exhibition, so, uh, and that, that was very attractive to me. And up next we'll have the day's business news, so stay with us.